One trick ponies. Is it good to be a one trick pony? Is it a bad thing? Well, that's what we're talking about today on the Sub 2 Deal Show. Hey, sub tours, welcome to this episode of the Sub Two Deal Show, where we talk about all things subject to and creative finance. Now, occasionally we may talk about something a little bit different, but it's always something to help you with your real estate investing business. Today, we're talking about one trick ponies. You know, a lot of times uh, in Facebook groups or anywhere on the internet you go, you'll hear people say one trick pony, and it's usually in a negative sounding way. Well, let me tell you, when I got started in real estate investing, I did a lot of different things and there are a thousand ways to make money with real estate. You can be into uh, commercial investing. You can be a buy and hold long-term landlord. You can focus on doing lease options, whether they're buying the house conventionally and, and selling it with a lease option. You can do sandwich lease options. Gosh, you can do mobile homes. You can make money with real estate in a thousand different ways. Uh, you can buy and rehab. You can buy subject to and sell with seller financing. And I'll tell you, when I got started, I did them all. And I think that that's one of the biggest problems with newer investors getting started. They get overwhelmed. They tend to not focus on one thing for any length of time. And it's always best just for just for for simply moving forward at a rapid rate, uh, just to focus on one thing. We see that time and time again, whether it's marketing or anything else that we're trying to do. When we try to do several different things at one time, we don't do anything very well. So my recommendation to people getting started is to evaluate uh, the best or at least determine what the best investing method will be, depending on a lot of things. Your, uh, your, gee, just your, your personality type. Gosh, do you like to talk to people? Are you more introverted? Is that difficult for you? Uh, do you have cash to go out and buy properties or for down payments? Do you have good credit? All of these things should be taken into consideration when you're when you're looking at an investing strategy. Uh, but as far as the one trick pony thing goes, what happened with me for the first 10, 12 years, we did a variety of things. We bought houses subject to sold them with lease options. We bought houses for cash with lines of credit, uh, fixed them up and retailed them. We uh, would do buy and hold and, and either do a straight rental or Section 8 rental. We did a variety of different things. And you've probably heard people say many times, well, if I could just start over. You know, sometimes life presents you with that opportunity. And for me, that opportunity came in, in the form of a very long uh, divorce uh, that was very costly. So I found myself in a position where I could say, well, I'm getting to start over again. So what do I want to do? And I really just evaluated all of the things that I had done over the past 10, 12 years and said, what did I really like? What did I not like? What worked well? What didn't work well? And really settled on uh, what we call today the 12 house blueprint. And that is nothing but buying nicer homes that need very little to no work, buying them subject to and selling those with seller financing. We don't sell with lease options. We don't do any straight rentals. It is a very, very targeted uh, method. And, and people will say, well, that's a one trick pony or that's not a good thing. What do you do in this market? What do you do in that market? And for that, I would say the key 
if you want to be a one trick pony is sustainability. Does your business model work in any market? Now, for example, uh, a lot of times uh, in, in a super hot market, you know, there's questions on whether how successful you'll be uh, with, with wholesaling. Okay. Let's say the market crashes. We've been in a really hot market for a couple of years now. Let's say that you find most everybody underwater this time next year, or most properties are underwater, or a lot of them are underwater. Is wholesaling going to be viable? Well, maybe not. Don't know. I'm not a wholesaler. Uh, but I do know that the 12 house blueprint that we talk about is sustainable in any market. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, uh, we can buy houses and pay full price. Okay. If I've got a, a seller that's got a $300,000 house and they owe uh, $295 or $300 or even $305 or $310, I can still take over the payments on that house, mark it up 8 or 10%, collect 10% down payment from my buyer, and go into this seller finance deal owing what my buyer owes me and still make money on the interest spread every month. Okay. Well, let's say that the market does tank next year or six months from now, whatever the case may be. And uh, then all of a sudden that $300,000 house is only worth 250 or 225. Well, one of a couple of things will happen. One, either my buyer is, is going to be one of the few people that say, Hey, I owe 300 on this house. It's only worth 225. I'm going to give it back to you. You know, very few people do that. Remember, we're not dealing with investors. These are homeowners. That's their home. And most people ride it out. They know that real estate goes up in value. It goes down in value. They can still afford the payments. Their payments haven't changed. They're probably just going to stay. Maybe one out of 10 will hand you the keys back. But if they do, that's still okay. Now, if I get the keys back on a house that I now owe 300 on, that's only worth 225, can I sell it to another buyer? Well, not in good conscience. I can't mark that house up to 300. It would never appraise in two or three years, which is our goal to cash them out. So what's my next step? Well, it's a very, very distant plan B for us, but it's to rent the house out until the market changes. One of the key things that we look at in the 12 house blueprint is what will the property rent for? That's, that's very key. So we know as our distant plan B, if we have to rent that house out, that we're still going to cash flow. Now we may have to be a landlord for a few years and I wouldn't like that, but it means the business model still works. So again, we use worst case scenarios in this evaluation to make sure the business plan is sustainable. Um, as far as a one trick pony, I have no shame in being a one trick pony. I'll tell you, everybody knows that specialists get paid a lot more than general practitioners. Let's just look, for example, at doctors. You know, a, a general practitioner, the average income in 2020 for a general practitioner was a little bit over 200, I think it was $214,000 a year, while the average specialist makes over $600,000 a year, it's three times the income of just the one, you know, the, the, the one trick pony guy makes three times the income of the do everything sort of guy. So, and I just use that as a, as an example, when you're talking about one trick ponies, if you've got something that you really like to do and it works in all markets, uh, whether markets are up, markets are down, there's nothing wrong with that. Being a one trick pony lets you really refine and fine tune your systems, your methods for doing things, it can be incredibly simple. It allows you to be really, really focused. So for that reason, I think one trick ponies are great. Of course, that's what I do. So I like it. <laughs> anyway, if you have any questions about that, just let us know. If you have questions about the 12 house blueprint, which is what we focus on in our sub two max coaching group, I'd love to answer those for you. So um, that's what uh, we've got today on the, uh, the one trick pony. It's a good thing. So if you've got something you like, 
take a look at it. That's it for this edition of the Sub2 Deal Show. If you haven't yet, we would like, like to ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We release a new video pretty much every day there, uh, giving you some information on real estate investing, how to grow your business, and, uh, and how to make more money in real estate. And if you're looking for the absolute most affordable, best coaching on the planet, maybe you're a wholesaler or a rehabber and you're interested in learning how to create cash flow. Maybe you're, you're just taking a look at real estate. You're not sure what you want to do yet. And you want to see if that one trick pony thing might work for you. Join us at $7 coaching. Dot com. $7 a month. I'll answer your questions personally. And we do a lot of teaching in that group as well. So guys, that is it. Um, talk to some sellers and buy some houses. Mm -hmm.